I've got Raina Russell here. Is that what you go by or do you have another name? I do. I have a I thought so. Name. So my stage name is Raina Campbell. And Raina, Raina Campbell. Campbell. Yeah, it's my married name. Ah, uh, gotcha. Okay. So tell me exactly, you're in Los Angeles right now, but you don't live in Los Angeles, right? No, um, I am from England. I live in Hertfordshire, which is just north of London. I live in the yeah. countryside. So it's a happy balance. You go to, into the city and do your work and then you come out and you can breathe. <sighs> and breathe. <laughs> Um, one of the things that I wanted to mention was that we met in uh, Sutton Coldfield at Gemma Wentz Elevate Live event, and I have really enjoyed getting to know a lot of the different people that I met there. Plus, I get to know a lot of people around the world online before I ever meet them, but it was the opposite for for us. I met you in person first, and now we're getting to talk online. And I've actually seen you in my news feed quite a bit lately, and you've been talking a lot about uh, mindset work and so on and so forth that you do with current actors and other artists. And tell me a little bit more about that and what you do with them. Yeah, so I work with artists, creatives, and performers, and... They have normally been in the game 5, 10, 15, 20, 30 years. And they get to a point where they feel their careers are stagnant or that they're not able to create bigger, more visible opportunities. So I look at the artist, I look at their energy system, and I can pick up what is blocking them, their limiting beliefs, their points of view. And then I change it with energy work and processes and align them continually so that they start achieving what it is they want and i've been getting incredible results i'm proud to say so Yay. Mm, i started it because i didn't work at one point for six years mm -hmm. and i was very frustrated and i thought well i'm brilliant i'm talented i have an agent that's okay but I'm not being seen. And when I am being seen, I keep getting rejected. And it doesn't make sense to me. Why would God put me in a career and give me this passion in my heart and then I'm not able to extract anything out of it? And as I got older, I started worrying about my future. This is not sustainable. And I've always been into like the law of attraction and quant all that sort of thing. Mm -hmm. And I would read books get a little result, but then nothing that was consistent. And I joined Denise Duffield Thomas's Lucky Bitch Bootcamp, which um, is a mastermind for female entrepreneurs. And what I noticed is that women would go in there with an idea, and then one, two, three, four, five years later, they'd be like just killing it online. And I, all, I joined that because I had a business at the time that was selling physical products. But I always used to think it would be so great if there was something like that for artists because not everything is relevant for an artist. And a number of people said, you should do it. You're really good at manifesting. You're really good at this and that. But I was thinking, I'm good at manifesting, but it's not consistent. And my trajectory is not that going up down. Mm -hmm. down so I started working with an energy healer and I started getting downloads I had a meltdown one day I was like I'm done and then that's when the information starts coming and I created this course it just came to me and then over the course of the year I beta tested it refined it and then it came to be what it is the career reboot and as I've been applying it to myself, my career has just gone up. And then as artists come in, them too. So that's what we do. So what was it that kept you down for those six years that you were not working in? And it was, it was in acting, right, that you were doing? And you just, were you trying hard and not getting any results? 
but it was just, you think it was something in your mind that was creating that block from, you know, from, from moving forward and getting hired? Definitely. So I had conscious and subconscious beliefs. So I would, because I got so many rejections, I would start to get nervous when I went for auditions and I start to think, oh, they're not going to pick me. I'm not good enough. Um, I haven't worked now for ages. So I feel like my, what age I am and my CV it doesn't match. And I just feel like they probably are judging me. So I would go in with all that in my head. Mm -hmm. And I also had this subconscious belief that I wasn't aware of that I'm fearful of success. And people, when I would do work with energy healers, would say that to me, but it didn't make sense to me. I was like, why would I be scared of success? That's like what I'm killing myself to gain. To do, right. Yeah. But what would happen is if I got successful, I would get very sick. And I mean like down, out, debilitated, can't move off the couch for months. And I never knew what was going on, but it got to the point where it was like, get a job, get sick, get a job, get sick. And when I looked into it, it was, I was so terrified that I would be vilified, hated. My friends would just be like, don't want to be your friend. I would outshine my parents that I just thought, if I keep myself sick, and this was not conscious, it was all going on subconsciously. Mm -hmm. If I keep myself sick, when I do get a job, no one can touch me because I'll just say, well, I was sick. So even though I got a job, I was very, very sick to make them almost back off and feel sorry for me. I had so much going on. Wow, that's huge. <laughs> and then, so how did you actually push through that to where you are now that you when you're having success, you're not getting sick? So once I realized that was the block, I did a number of things. I worked with, I, I, I worked with a kinesiologist. Okay. I did some, a modality called RTT. And I worked with, I'm, I'm telling you like almost everyone, crystal healers, Reiki, like I really went in for it. And what would happen is it lessened the symptoms, but I would still get, I would still feel myself getting nauseous, like I'd be on a job and I'd be like, why do I suddenly feel nauseous? I must have a virus, I must have a virus. And I started to have to tell myself, I don't care if my friends hate me. I'm serving people who need to see this message, this piece of art. Mm -hmm. And so I switched my focus from what are they gonna think about me to what is it that my purpose is, what am I here to do? And I also had to tell myself, I'm safe. This doesn't mean anything. It just means I get to help. So, and I still remind myself of that every time I get jobs, and that helps a lot. Do you have any current projects going on that you're you're doing with acting? Oh my God, Sally! I've so many because I also I'm an actress and I'm a I'm a filmmaker, producer, director, writer. So I'm actually, all of those things are at the moment. So, okay, where to start? So I'm working on my second feature film and we are in the process of talking to sales agents, which is new territory for me. So I'm having to learn about film financing. Um, and then we go to the London Film Festival in October just for meetings. And then I am directing a play in the West End in London in November. So we oh, wow. Know, so I've been are you ready? I know. It's so funny because all the actors are all over the place. So we're doing like rehearsals online at the moment, which is bizarre. But I've done. Oh, that is bizarre. Are you using Zoom or something yeah, like that? <laughs> <laughs> so we're doing that and that's fun. And then I've just been here. Um, the reason I'm in the States is that I was directing a play on the East Coast and now we're going to do it on in LA actually. So we are mm -hmm. preparing to do that um, So for Thanksgiving is when that's going to happen. Nice. Then acting wise, not nothing since I left London because I left to come and do this in the summertime. But I, I did um, a couple of things last year that are due to come out um, 
One is Maleficent 2. Um, I know. Nice. I, felt, I know. I just had a scene in it with um, Michelle Pfeiffer, which was very exciting. And I'll tell you what happened, the same thing. I didn't actually realize I was going to be working with her or Elle Fanning until the night before. And I started to get sick. Uh oh. And I had to do that thing of, this is okay. So what if you, you know, your friends might be jealous? Some, and some of them even said, oh, you're so lucky, I'm so jealous. And I don't like that energy being projected at me. And so my body wants to get sick to go, oh, you don't need to be jealous, look how sick I am. But I had, um, I had you to- You had to push past, past that because you can't be sick going into this. I know, I know. Yeah. So, is Angelina Jolie's part, part of this one too? Or was she just part of, yes, yeah, she is as well. Yeah. And so are you actually getting to meet these people and do think scenes with them um, in, a, in, a, in a booth where you're doing your voiceovers, that sort of thing, or what? No, we, um, I worked with Michelle Pfeiffer and Al Fanning. It was so surreal. So first of all, Disney are just amazing. Everything... Feel like you're in a fairy tale when you're uh -huh. working. and I had the most amazing costume I mean I don't even know if I've made the cut we'll see when it comes out in the cinemas on October in October I think and you are escorted to the set by runners and they and the director came on and he said okay Raina you're sitting there Michelle you're sitting there Elle you're sitting there and I'm like okay so Michelle Pfeiffer's there now Fanning's there okay no did you get a selfie <laughs> <laughs> I didn't because we <laughs> but we did have a few laughs and she's very sweet actually good well, that sounds like a, lo a lot of fun. Um, I'm actually in Savannah, Georgia right now, which is where some SCAD is. SCAD is the Savannah College of Art and Design, and that's where my daughter is going to college. And it is one of the, as far as their animation program, it's one of the feeder programs into working for Disney. Disney actually comes here and chooses a lot of the students uh, to work with them on projects. And I think, Oh, I hope this is right. I think there were about 24 SCAD graduates that worked on Frozen. Oh my gosh, that's amazing. Yeah, so um, I'm in a creative space here too, which is pretty cool that it's aligned with what you're doing with this Maleficent uh, 2 movie. That's really cool. That must be phenomenal. That must be a phenomenal program turning out all these yes, other talented creatives. it's the College for Creative Careers, and we're thinking that my youngest daughter would also come here because she probably will get into film, things like that. She is very much a, a little actress. She's very into cosplay. She yeah. does a lot of voiceover type things. She does a lot of scenery. She creates scenery. She creates costumes. She creates just amazing things her own she films her own little movies on her iphone and makes them look like they've been produced you know it's kind of neat how she can do that so um we think that she'll have some sort of career in that direction yeah. she's a great writer so she and she says she wants to be a writer so you know maybe screenplays or something like that i don't, I don't really know we'll have to see yeah, we're so lucky in this day and age. Um, you can literally film something on your iPhone. I mean, we have no excuse really for not being creative as artists. That mm -hmm. and we have so many platforms, and um, yeah, just need to stay positive and strong. So, when you were young, what did you? How did you end up getting into this? I want to know, like, your backstory. Yeah, actually, so I grew up in Manchester. I was very shy, so acting. I, I never, ever thought about being an actress. Actually, my dream was to be an air hostess and work for British Airways. And I used to work for them. When I was like, when, and I'd be like, my name is Raina Campbell, and I want to be an air hostess. And please, can you tell me how I can be an air hostess? And they would always write, they were very sweet. They would always write back and say, okay, 
you need to be 18 and you need to have this many GCSEs and you need to be able to swim and speak at least one European language. Like, and then I would get the reply and I'd be like, oh my gosh, it's going to happen, it's going to happen. It was so cool. That's so, so funny. I know. Do, you know. do you like wearing pantyhose? Because they still wear pantyhose. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what the, what is the British name for pantyhose. Is it, is it knickers or tights? Um, it's you know it's the it's like the um, oh what do you call them? You put them on your legs. You put them on your legs to make your legs look smooth. Oh yeah, pantyhose. Yeah. That's so funny. My mum loves pantyhose. <laughs> Yeah. Well, they still wear them and they have to wear them. They have, they have them. They still have really formal uniforms. Whereas a lot of the, a lot of the airlines have gone a bit more casual these days. Yeah. I actually just read an article last week that Virgin Atlantic, um, it's not a requirement for their air hostesses to, um, have, wear makeup anymore. Oh, nice. <laughs> Evolving. <laughs> But the only creative thing I did when I was a child was reading, writing, and musical instruments. Um, and I actually remember asking my father to take me to a drama um, center when I was, I was probably 15 because a friend of mine did it and it sounded very interesting. And I was so terrible, I was terrified. So I was like, no, no, thank you. And I went to university to study marketing, business and marketing. Mm -hmm. And then halfway through that, someone took me to see a show, Fame. It was a, um, a musical. Yeah. I became enamored with this. And I was like, that looks so cool for a job. And then I said to my mom, I've decided I want to be an actress. Because when I moved to London from Manchester, I sort of came out of my shell a bit. And she went, you will finish university. Yeah. And that's up to you what you do. And I was like, all right then. And so I finished, and then by that time, I think I knew, like, I want to be an actress. And it just came out of the blue. I remember I would go to auditions for drama schools, and they would be like, oh, she just finished a degree um, in marketing. Interesting. And I'd be like, yeah, changed my mind. <laughs> but you know what? I mean, the thing is, if you are an actress or you're some sort of artist, knowing the marketing, knowing what is involved in marketing yourself is going to be really helpful because it's hard to get into these types of careers. Yeah, yeah, it can be, yeah. And at that time, it was very much a definite thing of you went to drama school, you did a showcase and an agent came to see you and you hoped that the best agents would get you and then that would hopefully open you up to start on having a great career. I mean, now it's not so strict like that, but. Yeah. That so what was the first thing that you got, uh, what, that you auditioned for or how, would you have a funny audition or, or a first audition moment or something that you could share? It was actually very difficult starting because I trained in New York at the American Academy of Dramatic Art. And then I suddenly decided, oh, I'm gonna go back to London and pursue a career there. And of course, no one knew who I was. Also at school in New York, you had to talk with a general American accent. So when I came back to England, I sort of had this sort of like an inflection in my voice and everyone was like, okay, you don't sound English, which is a problem if you're going to work in England. Yeah. So, I mean, my accent's still messed up, to be honest. But um, so I was like, okay. They said, why don't you concentrate on being Manchester? And I was like, but I don't want to be sort of like just restricted by. And they were like, no, it's like, you know, all the rich. So then I went the opposite way and I was talking like that and trying to get work and it weren't working. So I, it took me about two years of just writing to people and getting rejections and then Finally, I did a play, Romeo and Juliet, and they gave me the tiniest part, which is, was opening the play. I had a few lines, and in my head, I was like, I should really be Juliet, but whatever. And then after that, I did another couple of fringe plays, and then it wasn't sustainable. I couldn't afford to keep doing these plays for free and living in London, so 
I had a long gap of time where I wasn't doing any acting work, but just trying to make ends meet. Mm -hmm. Now, give us your best American accent. Oh my God, Sally. (laughs) (laughs) We're here. (laughs) The producers are going to be like, no, I can only do general American, so. General American. (laughs) Okay. Do what? I said I'm hot now. You're hot now. <laughs> yeah. So what was, um, do you have a funny audition moment that you could share? Yeah. I don't know if it's funny or tragic, but I remember I was auditioning for the Royal Shakespeare Company and um, it had taken a long time to get this audition and a lot of people putting in words for me and I was very nervous and excited. And I, for some reason, decided I was gonna eat Twizzlers for breakfast. So I ate all these Twizzlers, you know, like it was like a nervous excitement. Mm-hmm. And then by the time I got to the audition, I had the worst stomach ache ever. I mean, like I was sweating, writhing, just like I'm about to pass out. <laughs> And I think I did pass out in the toilet and I was rolling around in the toilet like, oh my God, I'm going to die. And it was my turn to go for the audition and obviously the casting directors were looking for me. And someone said, she's in the toilet. I don't think she's well. And then finally it subsided and I said, no, 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 I'm good. They were like, no, really, if you want to just take five, you can always come back another day and audition. I was like, no, I'm ready. And I go in there and it was only when I left that audition that I realized my hair was full of toilet roll and whatever else was on the floor in that toilet. And I looked crazy. (laughs) I didn't get it by the way. But what was hilarious is a couple of years later, I was um, at a cafe in London and this lady was talking um, about this actor that I knew. And I was, I just was cheeking. I was like, oh, I know him too. And she was like, Raina. And it was, she had been auditioning me that she remembered everything. And I was like, oh my God. And she (laughs) said, she thought it was hilarious, but at the same time, she was worried. But she said, you were not well that day at all, so. No, those stupid Twizzlers. I mean, <laughs> don't I eat. just have porridge. It had to, Twizzlers for breakfast. Oh, that's terrible. So yeah, terrible. well, there, there goes a, a good reason to take care of your health while you are going through um, all of the crazy auditions that, that you're lining up for. <laughs> Yeah, it's of paramount importance to be healthy in body, mind, and spirit. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Now, when it comes to uh, doing these auditions for different companies, different plays or movies or whatever it is you're doing, do you prefer to play the dramatic parts or what types of parts do you typically go for? I normally am put up for drama, which I'm excellent at. I'm also a very good comedian. I mean, they do say that comedians are great at drama and vice versa. Yeah. Yeah, I normally do. In Maleficent, it's a bit of comedy, actually, which was refreshing. But normally, I get the dramatic roles because I can go there. That's good. I I saw something you sent to me that was on YouTube. I can't remember the name of it, but it was excellent work. It it could have been a feature film that I did. It was called Leila Faree, and it was about a mother in South Africa. Um, Yes. I mean, the first, I think the first 30 minutes of that film, I don't speak at all. It's all in the eyes, so. Wow. And it, and it was pretty good um, to see how you were doing. You only sent me a small clip and I was in, you know, mesmerized by the drama that was going on and the story. So I appreciate you sending that to me. Um, is there anything that you might want to give out to my audience to have them either see some of your work or maybe lead them into some of your mindset work? Yes, I mean, um, yeah, at the moment, I'm opening up the career reboot again. 
So uh, many people say, I like the sound of this work that you do. I know mm -hmm. you're marketing it for artists, creatives and performers, but I'm a business owner. This happened on the last round. Can I join? And yeah, so we have um, business owners on there because mm -hmm. it's quite, um, I just look at the person and I go, this is what's stopping you. This is what's stopping you. This is what's stopping you. And that's what you want. Okay. So I need to tilt you. So we do that um, over eight weeks and it's lifetime access. And they, the artists, every time they go through the program, I mean, they're doing phenomenal things now. I'll have an artist who has a film, her first film out at the London Film Festival, another artist, because we do money clearing and everything. And she did the money assignments and then got a writing gig worth 70,000 pounds, four days wow. after. They're doing, wow. They're doing better than me, in fact. But that is open at the moment. And the website is mm -hmm. www flow coaching for artists flow coaching for artists mm -hmm. okay and then when you get onto the website you'll see uh .com. yeah dot com yeah okay i'll make sure i put it in the notes as well mm -hmm. yeah. on my blog and everything yeah and there's an early bird rate at the moment so okay well i don't know if i'll be able to get everything processed no in time for the early bird, but at least just people will tell, just ask, tell them to say Sally sent me. <laughs> yes, exactly. Yes. Um, so anything else that a name of a film or anything that, that people might be able to go look up uh, and watch easily online? Um, online, I have a, sh there's a short film online called Velvet that I did. It's, okay. I think it's about three minutes. And it's by a director called Iggy London. Iggy London. Um, it's sort of like a dance piece. And then, yeah, the next thing that comes out is a film called Dhaka. And Dhaka is a place in India. And we filmed that in India and Thailand. And it's starring Chris Hemsworth. And that comes out on Netflix later this year. And how do you spell that? D H, my voice is going. D H A. Oh, Daka. D H A K A. D H A K A. Yeah. Yeah, I know that. Okay. All right, that'll be great. I'll I'll be looking for that for sure on Netflix. Great. Yay! With Chris Hemsworth, look at you. Yeah, I know <laughs> why you're looking out for that. <laughs> That's amazing. Well, thank you so much for meeting with me today. I know this was just a, an informal little chat, but I, I like the way that it went. And I'm so glad that I've gotten to meet you and now get to know you a little bit better. So thank you. Yeah, thank you, Sally. I appreciate that. All right. Well, I'm going to stop recording. Thank you. Yay! Bye. You did it. <laughs>